to export the database, to export the database as XML, and I'll get into those features a little bit later. Okay, respond to car mode. This allows the application to uh, launch as if it was in car mode. No, remember on the home screen, the device I was editing was car mode. Um, that's what this is. So you have to have this enabled, and you have to have that device in the device list, which will automatically happen if I enable this. Um, <clears throat> and then you have to configure that device to do what you what you intend. I, I use this in, in the case you have um, a car dock and you have a Bluetooth A2DP streaming device that requires you to manually connect. So in this case you can just drop your your mobile device into the car dock. When it sees the car dock UI intent it will launch uh, this application to do what you've configured car dock to do and that's where you can have it auto launch the connection to the A2DP streaming device. A uh, very powerful feature of this application. Uh, same thing can be done with Home Dock. Um, and a Home Dock is like this one here. This is for a Droid 2. When I drop a Droid 2 or a Droid into this device, um, it launches an intent, changes the user interface, and that's when I can actually have it automatically connect to another device. Uh, same thing with Audio Jack. The audio jack, of course, is the plug that plugs into the device. So if you have one of these and when you plug it into the audio jack, it will respond just like any other device. Allow you to capture location, allow you to change the volumes, allow you to launch another device. Uh, all of those things are available. <clears throat> okay, uh, enable reading text messages. This will allow the device, this will set the the uh, application up to read text messages. So this makes sure that the text-to-speech engine is installed, installs the data if necessary, uh, and so forth. Okay, now we get into some of the location capture settings. Um, GPS listener timeout. So this one gives you an, an adjustability of how long it's going to wait to get a good location when it sees a disconnect. Uh, you can adjust it from 5 to 45 seconds. I think I have it even. And it says you can even disable it as well. Um, I usually have it around 20 seconds. It depends on your device, how good it is at capturing a location, and how much time you want it to spend trying. So if, if you were to set this to 45 seconds, after it sees the disconnect, which by the way takes several seconds um, after the, the Bluetooth device is turned off, then it'll, it'll basically look for the best location it can possibly find as quickly as it can find it for this amount of time. And once this amount of time expires, then it shuts off the GPS listeners, conserving your battery and uh, preventing it from getting a, a really old location. Uh, again, if you're walking away from your car, 20 seconds can be a fairly long time. You could be a fair distance from the car by the time it actually captures a good location. So you definitely uh, want to adjust this depending on your device, how quickly it captures the location, how good that location typically is, and so forth. Um, the next setting is the max accuracy. So you can also set how accurate of a location you're going to be satisfied with before you give up looking for GPS. So in this case I've set it to two meters. I want it to get as good as I possibly can. So it's going to go that entire time out trying to get a two meter uh, location until it finally gives up and then shuts off the GPS listeners or the timeout expires. One of the two. So this will basically cause it to stop looking quicker if it captures a, a good location really fast. And you can set this from two meters up to a much much worse. The higher inaccuracy you have basically the bigger uh, range that you're that you're allowing. If you uh, ever use uh, Google Maps in, in your Android device you'll see a ring that shows around your location and that ring gets bigger when the inaccuracy is bigger. So that's basically what this is telling you here. <clears throat> um, use passive locations. This allows the location listener to use locations provided by other applications. I've got it turned off normally. Depends on your device and depends on 
what kind of other passive listeners there are. So this is something that if you're not finding that you're capturing a location in the time that you need, you can try this feature, see if the passive location is, is giving you better. I have found actually when I try to use it that it gives me worse locations, so I normally turn it off. Um, using network locations, that means I'm allowing not only GPS, but also locations provided by your cellular network, which is uh, cellular tower tri triangulation, or Wi-Fi. So it can, it can actually create locations from those. I normally have that enabled. And uh, one user wanted a connected icon, wanted to choose which icon, car or headset, so I just gave a setting for that. Normally a little image of a car pops up when it's connected and then it goes back to the Bluetooth volume icon when it's disconnected. In this case you can make a little headset icon instead. Okay, these two uh, features down here for the SMS delay and SMS stream. This is the uh, delay for reading a text message and what stream it will be sent over. And let me explain streams here in a minute. Um, the SMS delay gives you a timeout between the actual ex uh, getting receiving the text message and reading it to you. And the reason that this is there is depending on how you set up your notifications, especially audible notifications. If you had this at zero seconds, often it would actually be playing the notification and reading the text message at the same time, so you wouldn't be able to really hear each other. This gives you the ability to delay the reading of the message to let that notification, uh, audible notification, expire before it starts reading the message. So if you're finding that it's taking too long before it reads the message and you don't have audible notifications, you can set that to zero. If you're finding that it is becoming a problem, you can set it to the three or ten second range. Okay, SMS stream. Streams are basically routes. So when I have a music stream with A2DP, for instance, over Bluetooth, then my stream goes over A2DP as a media stream and ends up uh, streaming through the receiving device and to the speakers. The voice call stream would normally go through the hands-free profile, not the A2DP profile, and that would come out through the hands-free media stream, which may be a speaker, or if it's integrated into a stereo, it could end up coming out the same speakers. And then an alarm stream is, again, the, the speaker in the end. It's the, the route to the speaker in the end that is going to be used for alarms. So it, this really depends on the device, which one is the best one to use. Some of these aren't even supported on some devices. Um, I have the default, the music stream. That means that it's going to read your text messages over the same route to the speakers as it is for streaming music. Um, this is commonly a good one to use. Often I'll use the voice call stream in some of my cars. The voice call stream comes over different speakers uh, sometimes, uh, and it's a whole different uh, mechanism. This, again, doesn't work on all Bluetooth device, uh, Android device pairs. So all of these really depend on the two devices that you're using, and sometimes it just takes trial and error to figure out which is the best. Normally the music stream seems to work the most, but uh, often that's a problem for me. For instance. I'll be in my car, I won't be listening to uh, my music off my Android device, but I'd, I'll be listening to the radio instead. If I sent my text messages over the music stream, I would never hear them, because I'm not on my auxiliary input. If I send them over the voice call stream, however, I do, because that comes out a whole separate speaker. So, again, just try the different streams, see which works best for you. <clears throat> okay, that's a look at the basic preferences that you'll want to set up. I, I do default these to what I figure most people would typically use, but again, you know, adjust this as necessary to, to what you want in your case. Okay, and there you see the service started back up. It tells me the service started. It tells me the text-to-speech engine is ready because I've enabled reading devices. And now the system is ready to perform its primary function. When it sees a connection, it will do the things I've configured within the device that it sees connected. A couple of things I'll point out real quick. Um, if, if you 